talk solar for yeah. a second because that that is massive and uh, we weren't prepared for that but we're going to do it anyway you've just got this this wonderful rug it's not a not a lap rug that's right this is uh, the amorphous solar blanket this is um, a bit of a unique product to red arc I mean, yeah an so, end. <laughs> so at red arc we have a, a variety of solar panels now for a, uh, this specific one here amorphous it's a special type of solar cell and this is a 108 watt panel. One you 108. 108. Okay. Equivalent, yeah. Wow. I have a 120 watt folding panel. Yeah. So I guess, you know, a little bit less than this. So right. what what are we talking? This is built for the application of probably when you're more full driving, I it, suspect. Exactly. A lot of the um, so folding solar panel kits available, it's all about trying to control the charge in our battery to match um, camping and full drive equipment. And the most popular one would be the car fridge and your LED lighting. I've got a question. What's a watt? A watt. A watt is an <laughs> amount of power. Yeah. So, um, and you, you get that by volts and amps. So um, watts actually from sun. Yep. If we look at this one square metre area, sunlight can deliver about 1,300 watts. So we can harness that, but our panels at the moment, they're not that efficient. So they, right. they only get around up to 18 to 20% of that. Okay, so it is important to have your, your panel, whether it's one of these or whether it's a, a permanent one or mounted on top. If you have that mounted on top, you have to have it in the sun, correct? Exactly right, So you Definitely. can't park under a tree, which you have to be very careful of anyway, folks. That's right. Uh, but um, yeah. in the shade, I'll say. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, ours is a portable one. We, we lay it down and we just, every, every hour or so, if we're sitting down after a, a tinny, Shift it. Definitely, and that's one of the most important things, Andrew. What, the, the tinny? No, yeah, both. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the, the sun and the solar panel, with the glass folding panels we're talking about, uh, the glass is there for protection, but it does reflect the sunlight. Um, we do have to have that solar panel pointed directly at the sun to get the maximum power. So your 120 watt yep. will really only deliver 120 watt when it's, it's pointed directly to the sun on a, a clear sunny day. So I've got a uh, 110 amp hour Battery. Battery. What's what's an amp hour for those? Yeah, that, so um, that's um, an amp hour is amps is almost like the water of electricity. So we, mm -hmm. we we can measure electricity flowing, and it's easier to think of it like water. So your battery is almost like a 110 litre tank, and wow. we can we can provide. It's only that big. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, <laughs> but we can, that's in electricity. We can <laughs> provide that all at once. Yeah. Or or over an hour, and over an hour you'll get 110 you know, amps or. One hour. Okay. Yeah. Through experience, I sort of know what my battery will run, and I know the charging and all that. But what what can I expect off of one 110 amp hour battery? What can yeah. I expect to run off of that? And how do you calculate it? Yeah. Like, do, do devices have things written on them? Or? They, they definitely do. And we go back to watts. Um, watts or amps are normally given to you on your product. Yep. Uh, for example, your normal 50, 60, 70 liter compressor fridge uh, will draw, on, on average, around two and a half amps an hour. Oh, so okay. we can calculate that over a 24 period. Uh, fridges are a funny device because they don't actually run the whole time. Once they're at temperature, yep. they, they turn off. So we call that a, a cycle. Yep. Um, and an average 100 amp hour battery could keep that fridge running for a good two to three days. It depends Tem on the fridge that you've got as well. Exactly doesn't right. It, and it depends on how often you open the lid. And yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have two. It. I have one for the food. Sorry, my wife has one and I have one. So we got the food and the, you know, all that. And then I've got the, the wine and the beer in the other yeah, one. That's right. Yeah. Works well. Um, okay, so we've got that, we've got the amp power, so the fridge is running okay, well my beer fridge is anyway. Um, the lights, the 12 volt lights, it's very important that when you're running um, your camping, we used to leave every light on under the sun, so to speak, under the stars. Um, we don't do that anymore, you know, we, we, we only use what we need. It's all very well to have it all turned on, but just think about your battery power. Exactly right. S snore machines, folks, you know, That's I mean, right. you've got... You've got to have something for those, sorry, but you do. Not me yeah. personally, but some people do. Yeah, and look, batteries are the most you know, important piece of the puzzle for our camping experience. Um, definitely keeping the fridge cold and the food you know, is the most mm -hmm. important part. Um, so when we're charging the battery with solar, the reason uh, we have a solar regulator is important to not overcharge that battery. So at Red Arc, we manufacture a lot of battery charging components. Uh, it can be a, a standalone solar regulator or we include that regulator into a safety device and battery charger called a BCDC. Right. Yep. So, I oh, know ACDC, but yeah, yeah. They, the, a, a regulator, so that literally will, you know, once, you, once the battery gets up to a certain level, exactly. it'll control that. That's correct. And st stop it from blowing or That's right. We, we can actually uh, 
keep adding solar panel and solar panel together and in keep increasing the wattage, mm -hmm. um, but we have to control that charge into our battery. So the solar panel we have here, the Amorphous, is a, a 24 volt capable solar panel. Uh, and we need to take that high voltage and put that into our 12 volt battery safely. And that's what the regulator does. Right. But to do, to charge the battery, we need to put the voltage up higher to charge the battery. But then once the battery's charged, you mm -hmm. need the regulator also back off and safely keep that battery trickle charged. Yep. Just, and that's what the, the battery charger solar regulators do. So. Okay. And that you might have heard of multi-stage charging. Well, I, I know when, when I get back, I put, the, put my van in this huge garage, which I had to build because of the size of the van. But anyway, that's another story. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I plug it in, and away we go. So um, that just trickle charges. Exactly. What, what are people about if they're storing their van at a, one of these you store it places, yeah. and they can't get power? What? Any recommendations? Oh, there? yeah, very good, no, Andrew. That's, yeah, so when we do... Didn't even rehearse that. Did no, you? that's right. So with... Um, <laughs> With our batteries and actually storing them, over probably after about a month, our batteries can discharge, and that's the nature of batteries, and right. they will discharge until flat. And a flat battery is very difficult. Sometimes they don't recover, and you have to buy another one after a long period of time. So keeping them full is the optimum condition the battery likes yep. to get the longest life out of them. Now, when we go camping on the weekend and we discharge our battery, and then we charge it up either every day from solar or on the drive home. Mm -hmm. uh, that's called a cycle, that discharge and charge. Now, our batteries have a cycle life. Now, to get, let's, for example, let's just say our battery has a uh, 1,000 life cycle. Uh, to get that full life of that, we need to keep the battery well above the 50% mark. Okay, if we, so don't yeah, let it go much below that. That's right, and right. Um, your 110 10. amp hour battery, yep. uh, the 50% mark would roughly be the 55 amp hour mark. Yep. Yep, and we can work that out with voltage. Um, you know, Red Arc have a wide range of voltage displays and <laughs> battery management systems that do indicate that percentage that to level. you. Right. Yeah. So it, it, um, you can perhaps whack a solar panel on top of your caravan yeah. if, when it's in storage in the in the yard. Exactly. And right. And that'll just trickle feed and keep your battery yeah. up to speed. Yeah? Exactly right. This this type of panel here is more for camping to get a very high powered amount of solar into your battery. Yep. And we do a, a range of 50 watt smaller panels, yep. um, which would be perfect. And a little 10 amp regulator and something like that you can put on the garage or you can put at home in the sun and have um, multiple batteries plugged in. So this regulator actually is designed for that. And you can have two batteries. It can be anything from the caravan, the, yep, vehicle, the vehicle, the, the jet ski. The key thing we probably didn't talk on was the cleanliness of the solar panels. I'd like to really talk about Oh, yeah, how do you, what that. do you do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, look, um, we, as we mentioned before with the reflection and having them at the critical angle, um, if we interfere with that light hitting the panel in any way, dust, angle, it always reduces the performance. So um, definitely when you want to clean your panel, just a, a nice wet chamois or cloth. Uh, we want to do it in the cold mornings or the cold, cool evenings, not during the hot days. So the glass can actually shatter. Okay. A, yep. We did touch on the fact that I've seen people with, um, you know, six panels up on top yeah. running, not, not a lot inside. Yeah. Um, over probably, but you know, they, they've got, I yeah. guess, more, more is better than not enough. That's um, exactly but right. they're once again restricted to the place. I, I guess it's for safety, it's better to have them all mounted on your roof. Don't have them so that you can adjust them. Exactly um, right. That's why we have a, a little the, uh, 120 adjustable one. Yeah, no, it's definitely um, the most ideal way on our caravans and motorhomes is to mount the batteries flat. Um, and when we tra transit, that's the best place for them. If mm -hmm. we do have brackets to get up there and adjust them, they're very difficult on some of the tall vans. Mm. But of course, that angle is the key to get the most power. So what we do, we overcompensate. So if we have an 80 watt panel, and it's flat, we're only going to get the 80 watt during the peak hours of the day when the sun's really high. So if you actually wanted to get more power, you would increase the panels. You might put two 80 watts, and therefore you would compensate by getting more power during that afternoon period. Is there any difference between where you're situated in north of Australia or south De of Australia? I definitely mean, what's is. The... If you're lucky enough to, to travel, you would notice the sun is actually in different positions of the sky throughout Australia. Uh, lucky people up in Darwin, it's almost directly above our head. So ideal for the caravans and the flat mounting on roof racks. Mm -hmm. But yeah, definitely um, the lucky guys in Hobart, it's beautiful down there. <laughs> the sun's actually going to be in quite a low angle. So you do need to have that panel angle critical. I guess it doesn't matter. You don't have to park your van if you if one way or another way, north, south, east or west, as long as it's hitting. Exactly right. It is definitely not critical, which uh, 
direction the paddle mounts. Yep. Um, the actual one thing to really think about is when we look around here and we look at the roof of the vans, we see a lot of air conditioning units, antennas, satellite dishes. Mm -hmm. um, any shade that could be creating on the panel can be reducing our performance. So right. we just have to be considerate of the shade. And um, of course, when installing, the installers know to mount the panels to try and avoid that as much as possible. And it's all very well, I guess, to do your own thing and DIY, you know, as long as you know exactly what you're doing. But it's yeah. always important to go to a reputable um, manufacturer or dealer, you guys don't actually do any, you know... No, uh, in, just the in, manufacturer. You, yep, yeah, you supply and, and other people fit it. But, um, yeah, it's always very important with everything. That's Servicing right. your vehicle, your, your vans. Yeah. Make sure somebody that knows what they're doing does the job for you. That's right. At, at Red Arc, we have a, a website, uh, redarc.com.au, and on Solar tab, we actually have a calculator. That's, yep. And the calculator is a very simple graphical click calculator. You can actually select anything from the fridge right up to camp lights, even the hair dryer. And hair dryer? The hair dryer. And yeah, so we use the inverter to run the hair dryer. <laughs> we, we can touch on that later. Yeah, yeah I'm and not, not going there. At the end of the calculator, we actually provide the results and the included components, panel size, everything required that you've selected. Yep. And then we have a link to locate a Red Arc approved solar installer. There you go. And you just put your postcode in and you'll get three installers including a ARB full drive shop as well, which can install the product. There you go. Beautifully done. As I said before, once you get the hair dryers, that's it. Yeah. We ain't no more. That's Matthew right. Wright from Red Arc, everyone. Just terrific story. That